some points and then quiet in others. So yeah, let's kick it down a little bit. That's better. All right, so let us dive in to a new game. We have ourselves the uh, the race that I uh, showed off in my preview video on YouTube earlier. Uh, but uh, let's uh, for those of you who might not have seen that, uh, let's uh, review our race here today. Um, so we've got the arthropoid, uh, sort of the lobster dudes here. Um, and our home world is the House of Rock. Um, they are the Rock Lobsters. And when I say Rock Lobsters, I don't mean the geological sense. I actually mean, uh, I actually mean rock and roll. Uh, yes, they do have a ton of races, especially if you have the stuff packs as well. Um the uh, the race pla packs and what have you uh but being that they are lobsters it is only logical for their home world to be an ocean world or well used to be uh an, a gentle one a, a, a ocean world uh more on that in a second uh so our traits that we're going to be going here today is well one of the things that i wanted to uh, one of the things that I wanted to test out that's brand new with the Apocalypse expansion is the Survivor trait. Or rather, it's a civic called uh, the Post-Apocalyptic. Basically, yeah, even though our homeworld is technically listed here as an ocean world, when we start the game, it ain't going to be an ocean world. It's going to be a tomb world. Hey, Midgar. Hey, Chaos. Hey, Peabody. How's it going, guys? Um... So essentially, yeah, um, they kind of accidentally nuked their sun and boiled the o and the sun boiled the oceans. Um, yeah. So their their world is screwed. The upside, however, is that the ones that survived on it actually know how to how to adapt to and live on completely nuked worlds. Uh, so they can actually inhabit other tomb worlds um, and actually thrive on them, uh, in addition to uh, ocean worlds and worlds similar to that. Um, and I figure, you know what? With all of the, um, with with if if a if a freaking so solar flare engulfing their worlds and boiling the oceans can't kill them, old age certainly uh, is going to have a hard time at it. So I gave them enduring, average leader lifespan plus twenty years. Um, and I figure, again, these guys, rock, or, rock and roll permeating every ounce of their culture, they probably have a lot of uppers flowing around there. Um, so if they eat amphetamines like uh, breakfast cereal, uh, their brains are probably pretty well stimulated. So I gave them talented and quick learners, leader level cap plus one, and leader experience gain plus 25. As you can see, there's a little theme here. Our traits are all buffing their leaders. Uh, these guys are all about having really, really, really good leaders. Um, their downside, well, wasteful. Consumer goods cost plus 15%. I figure, you know what? Rock culture, they don't exactly conserve things. Probably go through a lot of uh, guitars smashing them as, uh, as a, just, a, just a regular everyday, occurrence, uh, everyday occurrence, let alone the, the uh, wasted uh, supplies on parties and what have you. Uh, right then. Uh, so we already uh, covered the uh, their home world, the House of Rock, with their star. I renamed it to Light Show. I like that one a little bit better. So their government here. Now this is a little bit of a quandary here, but I felt um, I felt this would be a thing. So they are a fanatic authoritarian spiritualist government. Now the fanatic or authoritarian may seem like an odd choice for a rock and roll lobsters, uh, where, where rock and roll is usually about railing against the man. But in this case, they won. The the man are the members of their race that uh, don't particularly care um, for rock and roll. And therefore they must inflict rock and roll upon them and keep careful control of the man. At least that's my rationale for them. As far as the spiritualist here, the spiritualist here is, well, they, uh, their one primary dictator is, uh, their title is the Rock God, or in this case, the Rock Goddess. Um, they don't discriminate against gender, but it is, they see rock and roll almost like a religion, well, essentially like a religion, um, and thus the power of music and the power of rock 
is what drives them forward. And they're, they have such strong faith in their leader that we took Philosopher King as our other civic, which gives our re, uh, ruler uh, level cap plus two. More on that in a little bit. Um, so that's how we're going to be playing them. Now, the um, uh, Fanatic Authoritarian gives us plus one monthly influence and uh, plus 10% slavery resource production, which is going to be quite handy. Wild stylist. <laughs> um, and uh, for spiritualists, we get plus 10% unity and minus 5% edict cost. Um, and we are the second verse, uh, the first verse be presumably being uh, their civilization prior to them destroying their world. Uh, so this is the second first. Um, and of course, our uh, ruler here. Now, uh, our ruler and many of our other uh, um, uh, of our other uh, leaders here are actually going to be named uh, from uh, from my name in game patrons and. Um, I, I missed the Bill and Ted reference. <laughs> um, uh, are going to be named for my name and game patrons and my uh, ten, uh, 10 bucks and up uh, Twitch subscribers. So if, uh, if you are a supporter of my channel, uh, expect to see your name in here. I've got a little list in here. And as we get more leaders and also more uh, subs, we'll add more people. Right then, enough babbling from me. You guys want to see some, some action here. So action we shall have. Now, I am pretty much going to be setting this on the default, um, um, there, uh, uh, our default settings here, uh, as far as the games recommended. The only two that I've kind of tweaked here is that the galaxy shape I have set to four arms, just because I think it's a little bit more uh, dynamic. Um, and what was the other one? Um, I forgot the other one that I tweaked, but it wasn't anything significant. Um, everything else is otherwise pretty normal, so let us play. Oh yeah, the cartoon. Bill and Ted cartoon. In the eons since the first primitive rock lobster communities took shape in the uh, archipelagos and lagoons of the House of Rock, our civilization has spread and prospered. But Secondian society was not always uh, united towards a common goal. In centuries past, mounting tensions between competing nations came to an apocalyptic head in, in a global thermonuclear war. Or in this case, they had a planet-wide concert and they flung nuclear weapons into the sun um, to make for pyrotechnics. And the sun did not really appreciate that and ended up having a solar flare blow boiling their world. But same result. Um, in the decade to follow, the surviving rock lobsters faced radiological contamination, mutations, famine, and violent tribalism. It was in this grim crucible that the second verse was truly forged, and with it, a new world order. Now, after the discovery of the Hyperlane network, the finest minds of the second verse have uh, finished the development of the first hyperdrives, and the stars themselves are finally within our grasp. All right, let us begin. Now, before we unpause, let us survey our situation here. And also, I'll explain things along here. Yes, the B-52. Absolutely, we will be having some B-52s here. So let's take a look at our at our leader here. So um, Larissa here uh, comes with uh, two different... Uh, uh, two different random ruler traits and also um, an agenda that uh, all give modifiers to uh, the Empire while she's in power. So we've got charismatic minus 10% edict cost and plus 20% edict duration. That's really good. Uh, we can definitely be playing with edicts there. Uh, Champion of the people plus 5% happiness. Not bad. Not bad at all. And her agenda, a new generation, 10% growth speed and another 5% happiness. So we, uh, we, 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 uh, we're definitely gonna be having a lot more lobsters coming our way, which is awesome. That's actually really, really quite good. Um, now, um, our home system here, light show, we've got a couple, we got our home world here. Uh, right, you know, that's our star base. Where's our, uh, where's our world itself? There it is. The House of Rock. Now, remember, we selected a um, an ocean planet as our home world. 
Um, yeah, basically the Woodstock leader. She she is all about uh, about acoustic guitars and whatnot. But hey, that's a perfectly valid type of rock and roll. We do not discriminate. Uh, but yes, the House of Rock was ocean. Now it is a tomb world. Um, so yeah, they've nuked their world to heck, but that doesn't bother them. They've ad they've adopted uh, and adapted to it. Uh, so that don't bother them at all. Now, let us take a look at our science and our scientists. Um, so, um, let's see. I'm not too thrilled about the military theory leader. Um, adaptable leader's fine. Um, but, uh, let's see. Will we be able to... Yeah, let's, uh, let's rename some leaders here. Just so we can get some more thing here. Thibbo. And our... Uh, let's see here. Uh, Bart. Peel. We'll just, these, you know, quick renames. And since these guys live so long, we're not going to be doing a lot of frequent renames. Just a, a little bit more during the beginning. Dana Black. And actually, all right. So let us take a look here. Yes, adapt, adopt, and improve. Precisely. So what happens is we get our uh, listing of three different randomly selected technologies that we can choose from. Um, now, looking at these three, well, before I... One thing I like to do is I like to see what my options are in all three categories uh, before picking one in one, because what, uh, what what's available in the other, the society and the engineering, may sort of dictate what sort of direction we might want to go with physics here. Uh, so, let's see here. We've got... All right, Holo Temple is good, although growth rate uh, stacked on all of our other growth things, and these guys will be growing like weeds, which is a good thing. Uh, so I think I'm going to go, and off-world trading companies, uh, that's a little bit too advanced and actually kind of synergistic uh, with stuff that we don't have yet. Uh, so I think I'm going to go growth speed, because that's a passive buff. It applies immediately as soon as the tech is researched anyway. I don't have to buy or build or upgrade anything, so that works out nicely. Now let's take a look at engineering. All right, we can go engineering facility. That allows us to improve more, um, um, allows us to improve more our labs to focus them a little bit more in engineering. Um, and that's not a bad tech, but a uh, couple other things. I think I might want to go powered exoskeletons because again, this gives us a passive bonus and that 5% minerals bonus is something quite tasty. So we're going to go for that. Now up here, being that both of our bonuses here do not require us to build anything or buy anything to upgrade, um, I'm, I'm more comfortable going with the item that does uh, require you to build or upgrade buildings in order to get their benefit, Power Plant Mark II. Um, they, it just gives, it's just a better power plant that gives us more energy. But we have to invest minerals in, in not only building Power Plant Mark I's, but then upgrading them to the twos. Hey, Jeff Stream, welcome, welcome, welcome. So we're gonna go with that. Now, the downside is their research speeds are kind of meh. Their things don't really match up with their skills, um, but we can't really do anything about that at the moment. Uh, I may look into reassigning some in, in, the, in the future. Right then, so, um, now, one of the changes they've made in the Apocalypse in 2.0 is that your homeworld system starts already explored. So you already know what, are, what all the planets are and what resources are available for, for orbital mining stations and research stations. Uh, the other thing that they've standardized is that you generally have one thing that gives you minerals, one thing that gives you energy, and one thing that gives you one of the researches. Um, so... We, uh, our first order of business here is to get our construction ship here. I like to start, always start with minerals because minerals beget more minerals. Um, 
and then afterwards we'll go from there. Now, the other thing that we can start building here is, and this is another major change, is starbase components. So gone are the days where your borders are determined by, you know, your population and your military and political power, that your borders are strictly defined by what station you have um, uh, either an outpost or a starbase built in. We've got... Um, We've got just our home world with just our star base, so that's the only system we own and control. Uh, and no matter how powerful and large our system gets, the you know these borders will never push out unless we explore and build outposts uh, on the stars. In which case, at which point we claim them. Speaking of, we're actually kind of an interesting thing here. We have a four-armed spiral galaxy, but we're actually like right on the bridge between two different arms. That gives us uh, that gives us some flexibility in going one way or the other, depending on well what neighbors are around and also what uh, systems are are sort of available to us. So I like I like this setup here. Yes, we require more minerals. Now, one of the things we have available, we spent our first we started with the game with nine uh, two hundred. Um, minerals we spent 90 of them on that first uh mining uh, uh station we've got 110 left at the moment to start out with um but one of the things here is we have an empty module slot now as you advance through the game and can build uh upgrade your star base to more and more you can start building more goodies um thank you for the host wife unit um but uh, now these are all very interesting components that allow you to sort of customize the the you know usefulness of your star base. But in the early game, you know shipyards, we already have a shipyard so that allows us. That's what allows us to build our military ships. Anchorage increases your naval capacity. We have a naval capacity of twenty. We're only using three of it, and ships are fairly expensive, so we're not going to need the extra capacity. Uh, so the only logical thing here is this trading hub, which just gives us four energy credits uh, per month, which is really, really useful. And it's a nice passive buff, 100, uh, a 100 mineral investment that just pays off infinitely. All right, so we've got that cooking. We're at 10 minerals. That's fine. We'll be, we are making 13 a month. And if we play our cards right, we'll be making a lot more, a lot quicker. Uh, as we go through. Um, now, the other thing we want to do here is our uh, science ship, which also actually has a, uh, um, a leader here that we need to uh, rename here. So, Shona Bellamy is going to be our explorer, and uh, she's got the roamer. Uh, which gives us a plus 25% um, survey speed, which is awesome because that allows her to survey planets faster, check out the surroundings faster, and just generally do everything. Um, so what I'm going to do here is one of the things you want to do is you want to prioritize uh, surveying the systems that are closest to you. You don't want to go out on a long tangent here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have her, at least to, to begin with, survey in this little loop just so we can see that um, and uh, see what we can see from there and that just sort of maximizes it now to even to 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 expedite um, her surveying and also uh, possibly un uh, uh, uncover some extra goodies I'm actually going to enact an edict because we do start the game with 100 influence now, um, influence is required to build outposts. So, uh, but that being said, uh, going at running out and building an outpost right away isn't really that useful um, because you we haven't even tapped into the resources in our own system that we've already claimed. Um, so, um, using our initial pool of influence on an edict, I think, is is useful. And as far as which edict. Um, you only start with a couple of edicts, but um, as time goes on and as you get go up through the tech tree, you'll get more and more. But this first edict is available to everybody, Map the Stars. Um, and it's actually really cheap because of, um, of um, Larissa's uh, um, uh, charismatic. 
so not only does it uh, give us an additional 25% survey speed, it gives us a 10% extra chance to discover anomalies. Anomalies are good things. So we're going to kick this on, and that's going to be active for 13 years. So that'll give our early exploration efforts a boost. Um, at this point, we've pretty much spent our opening resources. The only other thing we want to take a look at here is our starting planet here. Um, this is also pretty, uh, pretty well standardized in terms of what goodies you have available to you. Um, now, one thing you want to do, um, or one thing you, one pitfall you want to avoid, and I'll, I'll tick, up, tick up the speed here while I talk, is um, you want to avoid building a building, an improvement in, on here until you're about ready to need it. Um, see, the thing is with, with, um, with buildings here, they, they don't give you any benefit um, unless it's being worked from a fully formed pop. Now, all of the spaces that have our starting population here are already developed and improved with a sort of a static assortment of buildings. Uh, but now you can see here, we've got a pop over here and they are just starting to grow. Uh, but this pop is not gonna be producing anything until it is fully grown. Um, uh, and therefore, um, building a building here will only just sit there idle and cost us energy upkeep in maintenance uh, and won't give us any benefit until that pops ready. So I'd say about when the pop is about maybe two thirds to three quarters of the way grown, then start the building on that space. And that way the building and the pop will both be done at about the same time. Um, and that way they'll, you know, the pop will, will be working and getting improved production um, and the maintenance will be paying off uh, on that building. Right then, let's kick the speed up just a bit more because things get, things are just a touch slow in the very big, holy crap. Uh, an ocean world and an arid world. Well, the arid, arid world's going to be kind of a tough sell for our, our species because they like oceans. That's quite a, uh, quite, a f uh, quite a few spaces away from their habitability preference. But that being said, we will take control of this, this system pretty early in the game and have an ocean world at our disposal. Uh, the HM Inklok, I'm not pronouncing, has made a uh, starting, startling find. The planet is teeming with alien life. The first time in history we have encountered life forms that did not originate on the House of Rock. This amazing discovery has silenced those believe that we were alone in the universe. Although none of the alien creatures found on, on the planet are sapient, it is likely only a matter of time before we encounter beings that are. All right, so we get a nice little event there. Um, and yeah, that's our ocean world. That's going to be good. Uh, size 18 is not bad at all. Uh, let's see here. Planetary Alamalia. Animalia. Uh, priesthoods of the House of Rock are generally favorable reaction to uh, reports of complex and yet dumb organisms. Um, the findings spark some interdoctrinal debate. Is this proof that the rock lobsters are the lords of all creation? And all lords of all rock, you mean. Or we have simply not encountered our brethren from beyond the void. So of course we have a have our uh, our religious um, uh, uh, sector of our society talking about it, but it seems like they're pretty cool That's with the idea. Complete. Okay, so um, our construction is complete. Um, now it does cost us another ninety minerals before we can get another base up. But what we can do in the meantime, uh, while we wait for, because we're almost there, is just tell them to enter orbit. Because they got to make their way over to here physically in order to build the station anyway. But now, oop, and we got uh, we got our trading post online, so our uh, energy credit um, uh, are boosted here. So now we've also got our mining station online. So this is going to give us an additional two minerals per month for System infinity, survey. essentially. Okay, well, and actually this, wow, that was really, really quick. So this is a pretty good system. Um, what you want to look for, especially in the early game, is deposits of additional minerals. The early game is all about minerals. Why is the research institute not called the School of Rock? Um, well, it's, it's not a specific institute. We just have our research section here. Um, it's not a, a specific institute. Welcome back, Logan. All right, so 
Shona is going to be making her way over to here and then looping around pretty quickly. Um, we are at 125 minerals, which means we can start our uh, construction for our next research station. And this will give us two uh, points of society research uh, per month, which is pretty significant considering that we're only making five per um, per month now. And those those research, um, the society research, you know, feeds into the uh, the different the three different um, um, re uh, research things. Obviously, we the our researchers here will eventually boost them, but unfortunately, we're not getting a lot of boost right now. Just a two percent boost because they're level one, but they should be leveling up pretty soon, and hopefully, the boosts will be coming along with. And actually, before we let them get too invested in here, one thing I do want to see here is, is there another researcher in the pool that might be better? Um, queue up the new construction. I, I can't until I'm at 90 minerals. And you don't want to queue up too much. There is a Sports Illustrated ad. Wow, Sports Illustrated? Really? Interesting. I can't say I've ever <laughs> had one of those advertisers going for me. Anyway, we want to see if there is somebody else in here that might be a more suitable researcher um, that we can then um, um, uh, kick, uh, kick somebody over to uh, from, from the research department into a second science ship, because that is useful. Now we do have uh, Meticulous. That is good for an explorer. On the other hand, um, we do have Adaptable here as our physics researcher when we have two different physics researchers available. And Adaptable works just as well with um, exploration. So um, since we've built up 200 energy credits here, I do think that might be a good investment. Now let's just review what we have here. Uh, field manipulation. So no, no, well, actually, um, nah, neither of them are field manipulations. Um, we have particles and we've got computing as our two options here. That being said, um, I, I think we're going to go with uh, one of the more specific ones uh, and then we'll uh, get the experience gain uh, looped over there. So let's go for, uh, let's go for computing. Or hmm, do we want computing? I mean, computing is more civilian stuff. Particles is more military stuff, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, oh, let's do let's do particles. Why not? We need we need a little military in there. Um, and then we'll replace you with that. Now again, we're not going to have any any uh, difference here, uh, but you will start skilling up as well. And then once we have enough minerals for uh, a new science ship will uh, get a second science ship online because that's usually a good thing and not to mention we've kind of got this bridge here one science ship takes care of this arm the other that's science awesome. ship does this arm it makes a lot of sense um, but we uh, just finished that up so let's get our construction ship working on our final item in here and then we'll build up the minerals for a second science ship Oh, right. Thank you. Yes. New renaming the new scientist. Uh, <laughs> Find the name that you can't pronounce. Michael. Also, I realized we have a governor that needs a name. Um, and that is uh, actually my uh, my uh, one and only ten dollar Twitch subscriber. I am the prophet. Shadow, and yes, it is all one, all one word on their on their name here. So, and that makes sense for the spiritualistic. They're the uh, governor who is resilient, so they're going to stick around even longer. Um, and that's actually all of my subs at the moment. So, if any uh, any new um, either uh, ten dollar and up Twitch subs or uh, name in game patrons come along, they will be renamed. Uh, otherwise, I'll just keep the scientists uh, or the the, guy, the leaders at as the standard name. Right then. Uh, System survey complete. All right. Um, that one's kind of a 
dud, so we don't need to necessarily rush out to that to claim that system. But hey, we it's good to know what's out there. Um, all right, yeah, you're still taking a while. That's the one downside that we're that I'm looking at right now here is this. Evading hostile Whoa! Fleet. Evading hostile fleets. Okay, so it looks like we ran into some space monsters here. Um, so Shona is going to be booking it the, the heck out of there. Um, and having to take a, 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 a new path. Uh, I think I do want her to go up rather than down, so I'm going to let her loop all the way back around here. She's going to lose. We're going to lose a little time on exploration, but she can't. I'm not. I'm not having her uh, risk going through them now. Luckily, the uh, uh, the 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 systems with hostiles. That's not necessarily like an an enemy empire. In fact, I guarantee you, it's not. It's space monsters that are parked in that system. Um, so they'll be hostile if you stick around, but they're not going to come chase you. They're not going to come out and attack you. Uh, at least not the ones that spawn in here. You just, you know, can't, you, 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 we need to get our military up, um, force. That's a force level of, uh, 878. Well, our military is rated at a 107. So yeah, we can't take them out at the moment. Uh, we're not even going to try. It would be a suicide mission. All right, we are at uh, over 100 minerals, so we can go to our spaceport and queue up our next science ship. Uh, after the science ship, uh, then we will start uh, popping in and start claiming worlds. I think uh, this will be a logical first choice uh, for our next world. But actually, the um, you know depending on what this world ends up being and this one, Again, you want to focus on the ones with higher minerals. And this one only has a twofer. So if we find one without a twofer, we might want to go for that. Even though, it, even if it doesn't necessarily have a, um, um, you know, a habitable world on there, we st right now we were more interested in the minerals. All right, so let us assign um, Bart to here. So Bart... Bart's going to become a really high level really quickly because uh, field scientists in, in science ships tend to gain experience just naturally faster than scientists parked uh, reading or leading your various researches. Um, so he's and with his uh, adaptable trait uh, with even more experience gain, he's going to give going to be giving gaining levels like crazy, which is good because then we can start popping higher level anomalies and reaping the benefits uh, therein. All right, our influence is building up a little bit higher. Uh, and like I said, as soon as our minerals get back up there, we will send our construction ship, which is idle at the moment, uh, to go claim a new system. Um, and I think this is a good starter one in the absence of knowing what precisely is in these two. So and actually, in that case, I think I'm going to actually move here. I'm going to send my construction ship there. That way, by the time we build up enough minerals uh, to start the uh, construction there, um, we'll, be, we'll be ready to start construction immediately rather than having to wait for the ship to travel. Because uh, travel times are something you need to factor in here, especially with the hyperlanes, because they can only travel between stars that have hyperlanes. So they couldn't go from here directly to here because there's no lane between the two of them. They'd have to go all the way around. Hey, Goots, this is Stellaris. Um, sort of a grand strategy space uh, sci-fi empire management. We are the Rock Lobsters, um, ushering in a new era of rock. Ah, now we just got our first tradition. Traditions tie into your uh, fifth resource, Unity. Now, Unity is sort of your uh, social development, how cohesive your society is, how, how, how developed your culture is, that sort of thing. And, um, well, we've got quite a bit of this uh, Unity. We, we gain it pretty quickly. Being spiritualist gives, it, gives you a bonus to that. Uh, I think Shona gives us... No, Shona doesn't... Uh, doesn't give us uh, any uh, any of the, um, yeah it doesn't give us any unity bonuses but still being spiritualist gives you a lot of opportunities for that so what does uh, what does this sort of like Eve but it's not uh, multiplayer it's a single player well it can be multiplayer yeah a lot fewer spreadsheets um, 
still very complicated, but a lot fewer. And you're 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 commanding an empire. You're not just one dude flying around. Um, so these are all the different tradition trees are sort of like an alternative tech tree. But instead of tech, it's more about culture. Uh, what kind of thing does your society kind of want to specialize in doing? You know, expansion lets you spread out and get lots of colonies really quickly. Um, prosperity uh, deals with lowering costs of things to make you wealthier. Um, you know, supremacy and domination are about war. Diplomacy is making you friendlier and benefiting from that. Discovery, getting new techs. And harmony is is generally like refocusing your culture into even more culture and improving the happiness and growth of your population. Now, given I've, I've been doing some practicing. Um, yeah, Jeff, uh, Jeff Stream's right. It is a, an advanced real time version of well, real time with pause. Thank God uh, of civilization. I'm going to go harmony here. So uh, for adopting the harmony tree, we get pop growth speed of 25 percent that stacks on top of um, our um, our leaders uh, population growth bonuses. So we're going to be getting our guys rather quickly. Speaking of population growth, is our pop uh, not quite ready? Uh, not quite ready. Uh, so I think we'll start construction of the outpost. Ooh, what do we have here? Ah, t wow, a size 23 ocean world. I'm still going to go with this one as our first one, but these are cheap enough that we can claim these. Uh, and generally, you start sort of separated from other empires, so you don't necessarily need to worry about another empire just like quick ninjaing your um, you know potential worlds uh, too quickly. Um, so you can take your time to an extent. Um, System survey complete. Okay, looks like Shona. Um, that's not a good as far as mineral goes. Uh, but that being said, why don't you head on up? and continue exploring northwards. And we'll see how far up you can go. And then if you hit run into an, empire, an enemy empire or hostiles, we'll go back down, but let's see what's up north. Um, all right, constructor ship, let's build a star base outpost. So that costs us 100 minerals and 75 influence. So influence, um, Influence is sort of a cap on how rapidly you can expand and, you know, basically grab up systems with your outposts. Um, because, I mean, otherwise you can just, you could just go on a, on a, on a grabbing spree. But that being said, um, the outposts, I mean, there's no limit to how many you can build as long as you can afford their construction. Uh, received artifacts from an ancient civilization on, on blah, 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 blah. they must have been active in the region of space practically 12 million years ago, judging by the age of the artifacts. Uh, I've been able to piece together a scientist theorized that these ancients call themselves the Voltum Star Assembly, were worm-like annelids uh, roughly about three to four meters in length that communicated with each other primarily through vibrations uh, carried along their segmented bodies. So yeah, we found artifacts from an ancient dead. Ooh, another ocean world. Wow, we are we are blessed with lots of uh, colonization opportunities here. No complaints. Usually the game will precede. Um, we've received some rather troubling reports uh, regarding the deteriorating health of scientist Shona Bellamy. His, I guess it was a male, haggard appearance makes it look as he's aged nearly 20 years. Burden of duty is heavy thing to bear. So looks like <laughs> Shona. Oh, I'm sorry, Shona. You have picked. You have randomly picked up the substance abuser, which I mean is really impressive because this entire race is substance abusers. So you're like a substance abuser among substance abusers, which unfortunately lowers her lifespan by 20 years. But being that we have so many bonuses to lead a lifespan here, you're, she's still probably going to be sticking around for quite some time. Yeah, you, new, uh, leaders... Um, Anomaly found. Yeah, that's a lot of rock. Uh, 40% failure risk. Let's leave it be until we have a higher level uh, scientist to uh, examine that. Uh, and now, now that our uh, pop, pop here is about two thirds um, built, 
or well grown I should say then now we can start work on getting the building improvement here and obviously we want the mining network because its bonus will stack with the natural bonus on the tile so we'll be getting four plus the bonuses because this person's going to be a slave um, speaking of slaves so the way slavery works at least in this particular government civic is um, you know, the slaves are all members of our race. It's not like we've taken another alien race and enslaved them, but anyone who is working a food tile or a mineral tile is automatically enslaved. Um, now the, um, the, uh, bonus from being slave is, um, it's because we, because the, well, basic slavery itself, it gives you a 10% bonus to the output. And the fact that we're fanatic authoritarians gives that another 10% bonus to their output, to the, their output. So you get 20% more output out of these guys because they are enslaved. Now for uh, people working on energy and uh, research and other regards, they are not enslaved because slavery actually gives you a penalty to uh, research and whatnot. So they are left free, uh, free to just get their things at fairly normal rates. We don't have any particular uh, specific uh, bonuses to research or energy, but still producing it at a fairly uh, appreciable rate. Um, right then. So yes, we're building up our, our, thi our, um, our thing here, and then we can start building up uh, more and more. Of, we can start filling in stations here while our scientists look for other high mineral worlds. Complete. But see, now now that we've built this this um, this here, now our borders have finally expanded. Again, the borders are strictly tied to systems that you control the, uh, um, that, you know, that, that stuff in here. Oh, for Pete's sake. So our minerals here are tied to this planet. And if we build a, a if we build a colony here that will destroy the mining dock here, uh, so that'll just be a waste of minerals. Now, that being said, this other this other planet, uh, it's going to be a long time, long, long time before we're able to uh, properly uh, utilize this uh, this world because we're probably going to need to either learn a lot of terraforming or uh, capture uh, or trade for uh, members of an alien race that actually prefer living on arid worlds. Um, because different, different races have different preferences. We like the oceans, um, but we can't live, we cannot live on an arid world. Whereas an arid race loves arid worlds, but couldn't survive in an ocean planet. Um, so we're going to actually build the thing here, especially since this one thing will give us four energy. That's pretty wow. darn significant. Uh, so let's enter orbit until we get enough minerals here. Again, uh, this is kind of a mineral poor start. Um, which is why I want to sort of focus on getting min all the mineral development we can. Uh, through hard work, scientist Bart has developed new skills. Bart, what did you get? Bart got uh, Voidcraft expertise. Don't we already have a Voidcraft expert in our scientist list? Yeah, we, uh, yeah, we do. Just a vanilla Voidcraft. But I'd rather you be out in the field um, getting, uh, getting advancements. As you can see, when they level up, they have a chance of getting new things. Sometimes they don't get new traits. Sometimes they get bad new traits, but sometimes they get good new traits. Unfortunately, this isn't as useful for us, but still, um, Bart's doing just fine as is. All right. Once we get our minerals up, we'll be able to get, uh, that online. All right, we're starting to get some minerals up here, which is promising. Some minerals down here. If one of you could jump into like the sixes or the eights, that would be beautiful. Because we really kind of need it. That's the one thing that might slow me down here. Yep, there's that. Uh... And of course, yeah, our two ocean worlds as well. Um, we are going to be doing colonies, but we need to plan that out carefully um, because uh, getting a new colony online is kind of a burden on our resources. Uh, that and, be, and it's really expensive. Uh, so we want to make sure... There we go. 
let's get that mining station. Like I said, eventually we'll replace this, but it's going to be so long that it's worth building that. So, you want to be a cyborg? Well, you there is a... Um, you can go that route. However, because we are our, our civilization is spiritualist, they don't really care for robots or cybernetics or that sort of thing. They like to keep things kind of pure. Okay, we got a six here. So I think walking our influence up here might be a viable thing unless... I mean, this is a really good system to claim too, but I need more minerals. Um... And our pop is almost fully grown, so they'll soon our mineral uh, income will increase. And we have another mineral tile, so I'm gonna uh, the next pop that starts growing, I'm gonna want placed there, because uh, again we need the minerals. Construction complete. Uh, forty percent failure risk. Leave it be. Uh, the failure risk goes down as the level of the scientist goes up. So. If you encounter something with a really nasty failure risk um, and failing a failing a, an anomaly can be as little as just losing the anomaly and losing the opportunity to killing the scientists and blowing up their ship, which we don't want. So I like to wait until five, 10 percent failure risk before I investigate. They don't go anywhere. Um, so otherwise, you're pretty darn good. Um, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll just quickly, since we have it here and since our ship is here, um, uh, hook up this, uh, this other, uh, well, I hate to, I hate to use the minerals when we could be making our way towards actual minerals. Um, and yeah, well, it seems wasteful not to. So let's hook up the energy because we are there. And then we'll start making our way up here. System survey complete. All right, a really freaking good system. Not great for minerals, but otherwise still pretty darn good. Um, I think what we'll do here is we're gonna have you do a little bit of a loop around here. We're looking again, looking for systems to, um, you know, to exploit, and also looking for uh, neighbors. Um, to uh, say hello to. We also want to make sure that, you know, if we discover there's a neighbor, we might want to expand towards them quickly so that we don't lose out on land or, or in this case, uh, sectors to them, um, you know, depending on what they claim. All right, we're finally at 19. Still not a great mineral income. 10%? Eh, we'll go for it. I can deal with a 10% failure risk. And uh, anomalies have, have, different, um, have different effects. Sometimes you can get a little one-time one, uh, one bonus. Sometimes um, they will uh, give a permanent bonus to one of the planets. Sometimes they'll start a quest line or a research project. Uh, sometimes they'll unlock unique, uh, unique ed edicts and other goodies. Complete. All right, you're gonna make your way up here. Uh, while we wait for our uh, minerals. Mumfied remains of a single individual belonging to a previously unknown mammalian species has been found drifting in high orbit over Kellanus 1. The being is dressed in what appears to be a flight suit complete with a helmet and maybe a fighter pilot that ejected in some ancient battle only to be forgotten and left behind. Our study of the corpse has provided some interesting data. So we get we just get a block of, of 60 society research. One time only benefit, but not a bad thing for getting that anomaly. Oh, and looks like we got some uh, levels gain here. Dana Black is up a level, Thibaut's up a level. So now our scientists are higher level, so they're providing higher level bonuses uh, to just general research speed. All right, let's see here. Yeah, I think after we go here and here, we'll grab this world, because again, we don't want anybody to ninja this. This is a fantastic system, both for the planet and for the goodies on it. Uh, let's see, oh yeah, so you're making your way there. Let's queue up a uh, uh, an outpost. 
You don't necessarily have to build everything contiguously, but it costs more influence if the system you're claiming is not connected to your borders. Um, so it makes it makes sense to to build out your stuff here, uh, even though um, even though this system is not the one that we're really interested in. Man, tons of energy around us. I don't think we'll ever really be uh, hungry for energy credits, but that's fine. All right, this one's kind of okay. Still no great, great minerals. This is our best bet for minerals. Although, let's... Let, we now uh, know without a doubt that thriving biosphere is not something unique to the House of Rock. <laughs> well, I, 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 that's kind of a stretch given the fact that we live in a tomb world. Um, thri thriving biosphere and what have you. Both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life found throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalog the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenobiologists have urged us to focus our planetary service on habitable life-bearing worlds. Yes, a commendable initiative. So this starts a quest line. Basically, you, it wants you to scan one of every different type of habitable world. <laughs> Upper, yes, yes, they have the, uh, uh, they, yes, the, the ones who are not enslaved, uh, of the, are of the upper crustaceans. That is a horrible pun, and I love it. Um, all right, so we are getting more minerals here. Uh, we're starting to overtake that. Now, one of the things that we, um, well, actually, let's take a look at what, yeah, this guy's growing. We're going to want him growing on the minerals. I mean, you can move populations around however you want, but that's where we want it. But it's still a little early to build the, uh, uh, the mine there. So I think what I might do here is uh, I think I might actually build another ship, um, another, uh, another Corvette here, uh, or at least I will in the very near future. The alternative is um, uh, starting to save up for our first colony. Um, now the ocean world here is, is size 18. Ooh, another anomaly. So the one thing I wish they had they ha is telling us if our edict, our map the stars edict was the one that extra 10% edict discovery chance was the one that triggered that. Um, it is home to a small Voltum outpost, and they had traded with several neighboring civilizations. At some point, the trade post appears to have been converted uh, to, into a religious mission, where the uh, Voltonum attempted to convert visiting alien merchants to their philosophy. Trade ceased shortly afterward, and the planet was eventually abandoned. <laughs> yeah, they were just there to trade. But we did open up a um, habitable uh, the Voltum trade post ah but we need a, in order to fully investigate this site properly we need a level four scientist or higher so we're gonna have to wait for that that being said um this is why That's i wanted um uh bart here with the adaptable thing to be a scientist because they will become level four in no time all right we've got our our goodie up here uh let's we might as well hook these up uh, get our research stations I'll queue up the other one too. And then we'll be able to go up here and claim all of those delicious minerals. Uh, Voltum, wow, we're, getting, we're hitting all the Voltum uh, nodes. Engineers at some point built a massive orbital complex uh, dedicated to computer research. Strangely, they seem to have ignored the normally popular field of artificial intelligence to focus exclusively on virtual realities and massive computer simulations. Most of the complex has been ruined by weapons fire and micrometeorites, but remains is remarkable condition given the station's age. All right, let's see, what's the level do we need for the orbital complex? Level three. Uh, again, Thibaut, well, I'm gonna wait for Shona to get that because she's in the one in the neighborhood here. The richest society of the rock stars, lowest are known as the gigs. Well, I think, I, I would say the, the upper echelons would be um, those who are about to rock. And the slaves are the, the saluters because they must salute those who are about to rock. That is that is the natural order of the rock lobster uh, society. Oops, someone gained, huh? 
Uh, Michael. All right, Michael's up uh, up a level, uh, so a little extra speed there. Now, now the uh, the way that the uh, they changed how uh, levels work in this game, uh, leader levels that is, is that the uh, leaders. It used to be that uh, the leaders capped out at level five. Um, so once they reached level five, they couldn't become any more experienced. Now they have it where it can go all the way up potentially to level 10. However, in order to have levels above five, uh, you need to actually uh, have traits, techs, or civics that allow your leaders' uh, uh, trait limits to go higher. Um, which actually we've kind of focused our civilization on. So our leaders can go much higher than, uh, than level five. And they've been given the longevity to actually survive long enough to build up to that level. All right, we've got uh, genome mapping, our growth speed, another 10%. Excellent. Uh, so now our population is going to grow even faster. And now it is time for us to select a new uh, thing. Ooh, slave processing facility. This um, not only produces two minerals and two food by itself, it increases the mineral and food production of our slaves by 10% and reduces the, uh, the unrest. Uh, even though it's a more expensive tech, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a good one to go for. So uh, it'll take us a long time before we see this tech, but it's worth it to beeline for. Uh, and we're almost done with our other two uh, techs as well. And we have another tradition available. Excellent. Now, the next uh, tradition I'm going to go for in here is going to be, uh, and one of the other reasons I picked the uh, Slaves of the Groupies, yeah, um, is going to be greater good. Unrest is reduced by 20% on all of our planets. That's a good thing. The reason is, and one of the downsides to using slaves is, um, hang on, let me get to the planet proper here. Um, is the unrest. Um, the um, uh, unhappy slaves, obviously slaves generally don't have a really high level of happiness because, well, they're enslaved. Um, so, and whenever you have uh, people with happiness below 40%, they're, um, uh, they generate unrest. Too much unrest builds up on a planet and you start getting well, pretty bad events as the population starts making their unhappiness known. This being, uh, this, this, um, uh, this tradition, however, will now knock out 20% of the unrest um, and sort of keep a damper on it. And going further down the harmony tree will allow us to sort of make everybody happier uh, so that un the slaves kind of are, you know, they, they kind of give in to their lot in life and stop complaining. Uh, and thus don't make trouble for us. Yes, the engineers are roadies. I, I, I approve. All right, the construction ship's almost done. We are going to have you build this outpost. I think once we get this outpost online, we are going to want to start... 10%? Uh, uh, we'll take it. Yeah, free working class, essentially. Yeah. You know, they get free they get free tickets to concerts. What what more could they want? And food. We occasionally give them food. Um, yeah, so once we get this online, get all these minerals online, um, I think well, this planet the size twenty-three world and it being a choke point here, I think we're also gonna then go and claim this world and then start working on our colony ship. Um, a more detailed scan of one of the natural satellites orbiting the gas giant um, has revealed a deposit of precious metals and, ooh, and minerals. Yes, we need minerals. That was overlooked in the initial survey. Although the moon is very small, it has a stable around a primary and appears uh, tectonically stable. Oh, it just gives us, it gives the planet um, a, an extra deposit and it's not even minerals, it's freaking energy. Liar. Welcome back, Medgar. Uh, decent mineral planet up there, but again, we don't want to overextend ourselves because we want to start colonizing some of these beautifully uh, habitable worlds. System survey complete. Okay. Um, yeah, so why don't we 
pop over here and then here. I mean, I'll keep going all the way up. I, I want to see where the yellow brick road ends and see if there's anybody living at the end or if this is sort of our own, you know, our own, pr our, our very own corridor that we can have to ourselves. <laughs> 